<laughs> and hello everyone and welcome to another episode of our Languister mobile series. And with that tiny intro to one of the funniest characters that I've seen in a while, at least in terms of how they speak, this is a video to talk about Olivier. And uh, Olivier is the new SR unit that is available through the Trials event. It's already possible to get him today up to even 60 shards if you only farm a little bit. Uh, I guess two times each of the new 45 available uh, missions. And then with that you can buy, go ahead and buy your own Olivier. It would not be really hard to get him. It's very farmable in any of the situations. So I wish you good luck trying to get him and go get it. Alright, so uh, before we go into Olivier's specifics, I want to mention that to me this is also a, a very enduring character, which means I will be trying to use him more than maybe he should, even though I have seen him being used to a great success in uh, Apex Arena videos. So uh, the fact that he's also this much fun and he's part of Trials means that maybe he will be my fifth floating sixth character. Uh, depending on what the enemy setup becomes. Now, onto the character properly. He belongs in the Empire. He belongs as a strategist as well. And of course, he is part of the Trials team. Now, uh, this setup would allow him to go uh, a little bit helpful over maybe an Imelda, like the secondary help to an Imelda that tries to heal. So, if people want to start using um, Empire Honors, uh, people, then Olivier may be just an excellent addition to their team. And why is this? Well, because the support of Olivier counts in two different ways. He's a very good attacker still, has a very decent AoE for PvP, and uh, his talents and one of his skills allow him to be very effective at just adding some support. So let's get on reading. When a unit HP is at 100%, this does not ever change, so even at 6 stars it's still 100. Uh, and because it's unit, it means they need to be at maximum health. Attack increases by 10%. This actually goes up to 30% at 6 stars. After taking action, damage taken by one ally within one block is reduced by 10%. This effect lasts two turns. And I think I already have enough stars. I think the increase goes to uh, the damage taken by four units in two hexes. Uh, sorry, in two tiles is reduced by 10%, but I have not seen the 6 stars uh, buff. So if anyone has that information... Hello, Guop, how are you doing? If anyone has the information for the 6 stars, uh, the Chinese wiki did not have it, and our wiki doesn't have it either. So uh, I guess maybe I'll be the one to farm his shards first. Who knows? Anyway, uh, at 5 stars already, which is maybe something that we can achieve with the event itself, we'll will be able to give uh, this damage reduction to 4 allies in 2 block range. And the fact that it lasts 2 turns makes it very 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 close to Miracle. So the Miracle damage reduction is 15% uh, but it has a cooldown of 5 turns and this one has no cooldown at all. Just by existing. How cool is that? Alright, so um, before we go into the abilities and the classes that uh, Olivia can be, let's talk a little bit about the soldiers. And I know what you're thinking, angels are amazing, right? Everyone who can use an angel uh, can just simply destroy enemies. Sadly, 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 this would only be the case if you are using an Ulrus bow. Ulrus bow, as his last hard bond is annoying, ah, uh, I, I haven't been there yet. Um, all of his classes are actually archers, so there's no situation where your unit becomes melee. Uh, all you can do in order to use the Angel uh, and still stay at range with this unit is to use an Urus Bow or an Extreme Magic Bow if you're feeling gutsy and then going forward for an attack. Alright, um, if this was not to be the case, so if you're not choosing to use um, an Urus Bow or an Extreme Magic Bow, there's actually 10 million options. If you're going for a crit option, uh, you can go for the Mist Dancer. If you're going for a single target damage and you want some support that is mixed... Uh, the Gate of Fate, yeah, I, I understood. Uh, if you want some mixed damage, you can choose the Sorceresses, because they deal magic damage and he will deal physical damage. 
then at least you will be balanced out. If you want mobility, the Sky Archer just allows you to fly, which is absolutely insane for any character that can use the Sky Archer. That's why I'm gonna equip right now the Sky Archer. Uh, Sky Archers don't even need a level in order to get this bonus, so that's also pretty insane. Uh, and if you want some protective auction, I guess you could keep the angels on, because uh, maybe your your Olivier is not really made for attacking, it's just a support unit. Uh, in my case, I think I will be using the Sky Archers, it's just the ability to go through any type of terrain without being slowed down is uh, very very strong, especially for archers and especially for people who can use uh, this first ability already, aim. Now, uh, I want to talk about aim because it's an incredibly strong ability and I think a lot of people underestimate it. Uh, not simply because it adds 10% damage, so this is a buff that stacks with uh, faction buff. It is true, aim also eats faction buff timer, that's fine. But because it basically, it's a two, two turn uh, cooldown reduction ability. Not only does it let you go 5 blocks instead of 3, um, if an ability has for example 3 turns cooldown, you could very quickly uh, go through that cooldown with the use of aim twice. Uh, and in the second aim you even get to use the ability. So uh, do not ignore something as simple as aim. Uh, it's also a one pointer, a very strong thing to see. Equipment. Well, uh, in this case as equipment, there's 10 million possible ways you could go. One of my favorites and the one I would choose whenever I one day get the gear to do it is to use uh, those helmets that give the supporting buffs to your units. So not quite an SSR, uh, sorry, uh, SR hat, stage hat, what was the name, yeah. But more like those that uh, bless a unit with a random buff or something like this. So this would be my choice here. And because he's a uh, clothy, uh, sorry, uh, a leather user, obviously, last rights comes easily his best type of equipment here. Uh, regarding weapons, I mentioned there's a chance of extreme magic bow if you want to use angels or Aldous bow if you want to do that too. But I think for me, maybe a Hydra bow will be the solution. And uh, with that, I'll be able to apply some debuffs if it's needed and keep always the attack as high as possible. Uh, okay, regarding um, items, I think uh, this is a clear case of using another attack uh, accessory as well. Alright, so let's talk a little bit about the classes. I guess I can even... no, I cannot even advance this. Um, we have shown aim. Aim has two turns cooldown, which is actually one turn cooldown because of the fact that aim has a follow-up uh, turn. And then we go to the first ability that you would unlock, Roaring Bomb. Attacks multiple enemies within range. The range is 3 and then 3 by 3, which means it's uh, similar to a black hole range. Um, attacks multiple enemies. Deals 0.3 AoE damage. Remember please that um, physical attackers usually have higher attack than um, an int uh, caster. Reduces their damage dealt by 20%. So damage reduction is one of the rarer um, effects, they don't come often, it's much more common to give them um, attack down, that's way more simple. And the fact that we can compile this Roaring Bomb together with some other type of Earthquake example debuff means that we can lower someone's power to uh, laughable levels. Alright, if we go the path of the Noble, I think this is uh, very straightforward, a snipe. Uh, snipe is a skill that exists, I cannot recommend it on a unit like him. I know it has very low cooldown, which is basically the same as aim, so every time you have aim you can also snipe. Um, but I think he's capable of much cooler things than just simply snipe. Uh, it is still a strong attack, it's just... I don't know, it's not the way to go. First passive, boost. When entering battle, unit's attack increases by 7%. I don't think, I don't think this would be a good ability. Because this is rarely a case where we want to use him as a regular one-on-one -on -one attacker. And this is one of the reasons why. Excitation. Active, uh, active skill uh, has only three rounds cooldown, which actually means two rounds cooldown thanks to aim. So you can do this, aim something, and then the next turn passes, and then aim and use it again. Uh, so the cooldown three is actually a two, two and a half if you want. 
Um, and then it says, active skill. Heals the HP of multiple units within range by 30%. So, um, I want everyone to remember that this means it's basically having a secret blessing because uh, it's 30% of the hero and 30% of the of the troops, which may mean that if only your troops are dead, you're actually healing 15% only of your overall health. But also increases their mobility by one and grants them the regenerate buff. Lasts for two turns. This ability is insane. So you don't even need to gear your uh, your Olivier like you would a Liana with extra healing. And already you would be applying 20, uh, 30% here and then 20% for each regenerate buff turn. So this means you're healing basically half their health every turn whenever you get to cast this and then the person gets to act. Uh, act. I think that is huge. But what's crazy is the mobility plus one. So this could be such a game changer in any match in PvP where the opponent does not expect that you can move this one more uh, extra block for the next turn and then you hit them with excitation and that means you are in range, they are not in range it's very brutal to me uh, again, so the cooldown is 3 turns however the span is very similar to a uh, sprint so you would need to put him in a position where he can affect the 3 blocks that he needs uh, a little bit sad is that uh, his talent is only th 2 blocks unless in 6 stars this changes but I have no idea uh, so you would still need to be close by in order to provide this and the talent. So with this is 30% heal, uh, mobility plus one, two turns of regenerate buff, two turns of mobility plus one, please do not forget this, uh, and two turns of damage taken reduced by 10%. Uh, just for a random turn, this is an amazing buff. I think this is easily one of his core abilities at all times, no matter what build you build. On the other side, Musician. This this is the fun side. Um, attack support, large. This is very decent, however, um, it still costs 2 points. After taking action, increases damage dealt by 2 friendly units within 2 blocks, not including this unit, by 15%. Immune to attack and in reduction and effects that silence active skills. So, uh, if at any time you start a match and you apply this to all your units thanks to aim, so you, you go behind two units, aim, move to the other side of two units and then apply the buff again, because it happens at the end of every turn and aim is technically a move again. Um, you're basically making your entire team immune to silence and to attack reduction, so an earthquake from Bozel barely applies any debuff, uh, actually only defense down, but that's all it does, and that's just brutal. However, as I said, this costs 2 points, it may be just a bit too much, because... Well, not for defense break, so this is the classic 50% chance to apply 20% uh, debuff. This is Heartless Requiem, and it says, Physical damage deals uh, 0 0.35, that's already better, AoE damage to all enemies within 5 blocks, and reduces their crit rate by 30%, so again, uh, this is a very PvP specific thing, but the fact that you can reduce enemy crit rate by 30% is crazy. At the same time, affected enemies cannot receive act again buff. That's for two turns. Once again, you see a Leon that has not yet activated, you see maybe even an Olivier that thinks his aim would go off. Uh, these are the types of things that catch enemies off guard. So doing something like this would immediately end the turn on uh, Leon using chivalry, and they will be standing there wondering what is going on and why why is their Leon not being able to move again. And if that is not sufficient enough for you, this has a span of 5 blocks. So it's Heaven Sanction size. And uh, I guess we all know how good Heaven Sanction is. Uh, even in PvP, Heaven Sanction is still used. Now, it still says that it has 5 rounds uh, cooldown. But I want to remind you that uh, because it's 5, if you cast it uh, on a turn where your aim is still available, or your aim becomes available next turn, that means the cooldown gets reduced once by the first aim and again by the second aim. So the effective cooldown of this ability is 3 rounds. 
And I know, three rounds in PvP may just be the end, but it also may not be. And that means, so you could go, um, rec uh, let, let's start the other way. You could go excitation, start attacking with everyone, go crazy, then uh, do aim, heartless requiem. Past, uh, the next turn, I guess you would have to do something silly like falling back or attacking. Then you have aim again, then you can aim and excitation again. And then you wait another turn, and then you can aim and Heartless Requiem again. So the fact that you have aim to go around so crazily means that it's very easy to pull off these very very long cooldown abilities. And uh, you know what? I really like this character, so I will be using this form, it's just better. Probably Sorceresses in the end, or the Sky Archer depending on if I decide to upgrade them to level 10. Uh, and the coolest thing is you will be able to move around with all uh, the coolness of a bard cheering on your party. So I think I will be spending some of my rune stones on Olivier. At least, at the very least, when his uh, gear gets up to par, which at this point is <laughs> not, not really close. But alright, I think that's everything we have for Olivier right now. Uh, he's a very straightforward character, full of, uh, full of support ideas and also surprise attacks for the enemy. And I also want to mind you that uh, without going to Feraqua. Uh, at 5 stars, which I assume is what the, the event is going to leave us if Chloe was an indication, uh, he gets 25% extra attack. And extra attack means that it's also multiplied by faction buff or by any other type of benefit that increases attack. Uh, so the only sad thing about this is that he gets an A uh, because of his NSR. However, uh, uh, also the gear uh, increases will not be taking from this 15% extra. But still, of the SRs, he's probably going to end up being one of the stronger bow available. And the fact that he has support at the tip of his toes and damage reduction overall means that he could be a great addition to your party, specifically in PvP and maybe, maybe, maybe if you feel like he's fun enough in PvE. Alright, I think that is it for uh, Olivier in general, and uh, I think I'll see you on next time when we have some more challenges of the Trials in Time unlocked. For now, this is the end, and see you next time.